your arm with the opportunity to reach down to your enemy. Yeah. Or to yeah. someone I mean, you disagree with or whatever the case the may really be. Well. And say, here, look, I got you. I got you, man. Ladies and gentlemen, dogs and please, pull up a chair and sit on those knees, for we have a story to tell you we're still learning about. Welcome to Talk the Walk. This is Gabriel Moses. And my name is Henry Moses. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're happy to be with you wherever you may be. happy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, go ahead. Is that all of it? We're super happy to be with you wherever you may be? We are super happy to be here, and thank you for joining us wherever you yeah. may be. Yeah. yeah, you said my part was so easy. It is easy. It is not. It is you so totally easy. fumbled it's it, and I nailed kinda, yours. I didn't even bother to try to think about it. Uh, yeah, that was your problem. <laughs> yeah. We still have to think about it, y'all. You still have to think about it. Yeah. You got to think about things. Yeah. I was watching a little TikTok the other day. Imagine that. And uh, my... Pretty much favorite UFC fighter said that the reason that he was so good is because he constantly was thinking in every fight. Every second of every fight, he was constantly thinking. I'm not endorsing beating people up, but I am saying I'm a little addicted to the scrapping game. And Habib Khabib, or, and I can't say his, how do you say it? Namagamidov. 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 Namaga Meetoff. Namaga Meetoff. Yep. He was, he was saying he was constantly thinking throughout every fight. And I'm like, yes, he, you wouldn't, if you were constantly thinking, you wouldn't miss a beat. Mm-hmm. You, you, you're on your A game at all times. I just love that. Oh, oh and it has to be a chess game. Yep. Chess game. Oh, yeah. And, it, and just in, in anything, it made me think, of course, I'm always applying everything I hear to me mm-hmm. and what can I do better? How can I be a little, mm-hmm. grow a little bit? And I was like, think, think, Gabe, think. Don't just do. You need to be thinking too. So I just loved it anyway. That is cool. Next time. You that is re- cool. Well, if you do my intro, you got to think about it. No, it's still not really. A, it's not on the thinking level. Just, can you do it right now? Try it again. Uh, let's see here. I think, think. And my name is Henry Moses, and we're super happy to be with you. Thank you for joining us wherever you may be. See, you were thinking. It still came out a little sloppy, but you were thinking. I mean, yours wasn't all polished. Oh, yes, it was. <laughs> nah. Oh, I can't wait. Uh, you sound like Barry Manilow. Hey, baby. <laughs> Come on down here, baby. This is pull up a chair and sit on your knees. This is the position of anybody who is going to criticize someone else, make the other person look bad, Spitting and facts. make fun of their stuff. I did. I already own job. mine that it didn't come out right. I'm not going to own mine. I bet you we asked the listener, listeners, please, please, y'all never get on the Facebook. Get on there and say something. Call him out. He might regret that. Uh, they they will back me up. Gonna regret. They're gonna back me up. I feel it. We're I gonna get tell. a text from Miles. It's gonna be like, don't be changing things up. Come on, team, little brother, y'all. Don't team, be, little brother. Don't, don't be changing things up. Back me up. Don't lie. Go with the truth. The truth will shut sh- shut you free. <laughs> the truth needs to shut you free. <laughs> shut your mouth. <laughs> you wish that could never happen because I talked the walk. The uh, but going back to it's funny that you say that about thinking about. Yeah, thinking about things, strategy, all that kind of stuff. The uh, I was having my teeth cleaned yesterday, and my hygienist and I were talking. And she was, you know, she's been my hygienist for years now, and and she said, uh, said her daughter was telling me about how they were supposed to go on this trip, this wedding, all this stuff, and her daughter didn't want to go. And I kind of had this alternate plan. Where she was, was the trip to? Nah, I don't know. It's South Carolina. Okay, yeah. some pretty state. Yeah, country. right, yeah. And didn't, didn't so, want to go. Well, you just kind of wanted to change things up, go to Colorado, all this kind of stuff. It's a whole long story. But South that's, Carolina. So she, uh, so she, so Amy said, well, tell your, you know, you got to go tell your dad, but think about how you're going to bring this to him, <laughs> you know. Presentation. 
And she didn't. She didn't put any thought into it. She didn't put any strategy in, into it. And needless to say, it didn't go well. She just went in and was like, yeah, so this is what's going on. We're not going to be able to go because she's 18. Oh, uh, okay. And uh, and he's like, oh, you're not going to be able to go? Okay. And I was like, well, we were going to help you move down to your college dorm and all this stuff, but we're not going to be able to go. And he's <laughs> sticking to it. Like He's fired up. And so poor Amy was like, uh this is not going well. She's like, I'm annoyed at him. I'm annoyed at her. And I'm trying to kind of strategize and figure out how to get it all back on track. (laughs) (laughs) Well, we're not going to be able to help you then. We won't be able to help you to move to your dorm room. I guess you'll get a U-Haul and do it yourself. Oh yeah. Sounds like Gabe. Sounds like Gabe. Yeah. What? Oh, okay. Well, you're you're busy. You're not gonna be able to make it. Cancel plans. Well, we're gonna we're busy. We're not hey, gonna be able to make it. Cancel my kids, plans. my kids love the song, and they'll say it randomly. It's a hard knock life for us, and I crack up every time because I'll hit them with something, and they'll be, one of them will randomly pop out with that song, and I just die laughing. I'm like, it is. I haven't heard it. I'll have to listen to it. Oh, it's this. Isn't it Annie, the orphan? I don't. Know, maybe I think. I think it's Annie the that Orphan. Right. That, it sounds like a fun song. Oh, yeah. It's, you know, it's a cute little, mm-hmm. little rhymed mm-hmm. little song that, that ever, I thought everybody knew, but yeah, they'll pop out with that. And yep, that's it. Don't make it. No, I think I have heard it. it, it oh, okay. Just, man, it probably was like 40 years ago that I heard it. So it's little kids singing it. Yeah. The heart oh, that's, that's the way I hear it. Oh, that's funny if they do that. You got some witty little kids. <laughs> oh, gosh. I had to warn one of them the other day, your wit is a little out of control. Really? Which one? You give me a guess and you'll get it wrong, but maybe not. I'll give you a guess. Uh, one guess. Uh, I mean, I got a one out of six shot. Landon? Ooh, oh, nailed it. <laughs> well, you kind of gave me a clue there. I did. I wanted to help you a little because I knew you were going to go straight for Lucy. I mean. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that would have been. I mean, if you'd have just said it that way, I'll just give you one guess. Yeah, like, no. Well, there's one that's that's got her name pounded onto the doghouse. So. I'm a I'm a kind person. I'm going to give you a hint. Yeah, you're kind of kind person. I'm a kind of kind person. But so he said that. But but also the Landon is, is he's witty. He is. You witty. know, he's witty. He's funny. And so it, his wit is oh. growing a little too much. Uh-oh. And I'm like, okay. Overstepping in band. It's kind of like, you know, you're you're outgrowing your intelligence uh, and your wisdom more and yeah. more appropriately, your wisdom. Her. Yeah. You know, I'm like, you, you got to be careful with that wit. Wit is a fun thing. It can make people laugh and have a great time. Or if you do it wrong, it can hurt. Sure can. And, and that's a hard lesson to it learn. It was crossing into that hurt. You got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when, know when to, to walk, walk away, away, know when to run. Know when to run, y'all. Know when to run. So we posted a little video clip of you <laughs> <God>. <laughs> up on the social media this week. That was fun. That was fun yeah. and not fun. Yeah. Ah, darn, man. That it, looked horrible, but I'm, I'm glad it happened to y'all, but uh, I'm certainly glad it didn't happen to me. I mean... Do you want to tell the story behind that? So, Yeah, we, we were... we were The kids at some point that day were like playing this roll of dice, you know, the, the eight ball, shake the eight ball, and it says it's not in the stars or it's not in the cards mm-hmm. or straight up the answer is yes. So Which you we have, don't endorse magic. But yeah. No, but that's not magic. It's, it's, well, in the cards or whatever. Yeah, anyway, yeah. Um, no, we don't. And uh, But they were playing it with a dice. So you roll the dice and it lands on a side that says yes, no, maybe, blah, blah, blah. And they were asking all their other questions, you know, is does Logan have a crush on somebody right now? You know, mm-hmm. is um, is Lucy gonna have to clean my bedroom tomorrow? You know, mm-hmm. and it, this somehow they drug Carrie and I into it, and we ended up doing real things. And they ended up saying, um, "Can we paint uh, Mom and Dad, Gabe and Carrie? Can we paint them?" And Carrie and I are like, "Oh gosh." We had already dodged a couple of bullets right before that that they did that it said no to. So we're like, yeah. And sure enough, they rolled it and it indicated, yep. 
And but so y'all had agreed that if it that if it said yes, we'd mm-hmm. go along. And it said yes to that, and the kids flip out, as you'll see in the video. Or yeah, already, it's already on there. Or already saw. Yeah, it's already on there. But so that's the story behind the the behind, bit. But how it all played out. They oh, dang, oh it was cute gosh. to watch them. You know, I've rolled in the mud. Y'all look like some kids. kind of, Jeez. you know, mid-century African <laughs> tribal. <laughs> yeah. uh, I it, mean. It, we were painted all <laughs> head to toe. I was like, man, and their little paintbrushes on me. There was sometimes four of them painting on me, and I finally every now and then had to tell them, all right, stop, stop, stop. I can't take any more. Back away from me. Back away. I'm a very <laughs> don't touch me you know, type of person in a lot of ways. Now, if it's a hug or playing or wrestling, tickling, all day long, but dang, anything outside of that, I'm like, it like felt you're being probed. Oh man, it was cold. Tentacles. The paint was cold. The little brushes rubbing you. Ugh. Anyway, it was it was cute. They had a lot of fun. We had not. We had fun, mm. but it was also not fun, and we had to pay the price. Well, it looked like fun. I mean that that. Uh, well. That's an interesting thing. Everything's fun looking. Yeah. If it's happening to someone else. Oh, I, I, you know? Yeah, that's why I started out that thing. I don't know. For if me, it's happening I'm to out. someone else. Uh, you had pink fingernails and all that. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, oh. I was like, uh, go ahead, do what y'all going to do. <laughs> How fast did you have it washed off by the, when you were done? It took about, probably about five minutes. Showered it all off in about five minutes. But then I went and I dried my face with the towel. We have white towels. Oh, hey, it was. Y'all don't have any colored towels or nope. trashy beach towels. Carrie and I only use white towels, and so it just. Ugh. I thought I, I thought I get it all off. I went to wipe my beard and it just smudged and dry my over. beard, and it's just black, purple, red. I was like, <gasps> but I was like, when well, did you not wash your beard in the shower? I did not. You gotta wash your beard. I got everything I mean, else. You should do that every time. They put it all in my hair. It was weird. They put it all in my hair, purple yeah, and reds and weird. greens and blues. And so I just wanted my hair washed so bad. And that was where my fuck, I didn't even think about the beard. Yeah. Did. It didn't even cross my mind for whatever reason. Yeah. There it came off on the, on the towel. I was like, oh, oh, well. <laughs> it's at least, it, man, at least it wasn't permanent. It's washable. It's washable. Or even it's like not. that five day temporary or anything. Yeah, that'd be funny. You know what would be funny is if you told the kids you'll play the game with them and they could paint you. Oh, it would be funny if it's just not going to happen. Hey, Uncle Henry. No, no, no. No, no I'm out. I'm Don't gonna, be a I'm stick in the mud. No. They, they'd love it. Oh, I'm sure they'd love a lot of things. They'd love it. <laughs> go, go, go out and teach. You know, I'll buy them burgers. They'll, they'll love that just as much. Boo. I'll get them some pizza. No, because y'all eat pizza Boo. a lot. So they probably wouldn't love that. That's what makes it fun is the people who aren't willing to do it. Those are the ones that make it the best. Yeah. That's where the, the joy for the kid. Man, it's going to have to be something, something spectacular. It is. It's spectacular. It sure ain't going to be determined by no magic eight ball. I, I mean... It was a dice. You weren't listening. It was a dice. Okay. But it, you roll it. It <laughs> says yes, no, maybe so. And so. <laughs> and live life. Carpe diem. Seize the day. I seize the moments that I like to seize. Yeah. <sighs> There's an entertainment factor. And I do. I enjoy the crud out of the, the entertain the people. Like give them something. Oh yeah. To well, we could tell to some of the I saw, you... They'll say, "Remember when?" There's nothing better than a "Remember when." Well, yeah. Remember when you took that taser to yourself? Yes, I do. So do you. We have yeah. something to talk about now. Oh, you're in the family. I mean, there's only enough room for one of us. Nah, you're, you're we're brothers. Yeah, you did that, so as brothers, you could you could jump in on this thing. And it could be. I will jump in and I, watch. Boom, y'all and watch and cheer on. Uh, I'm in on that. I'll help paint. They need another hand. You know, I can help with that. Dude, there's already 12 hands. Okay. I can supervise. They didn't need it. <laughs> and in fact, Lucy was even, uh, uh, had the wherewithal to be taking pictures. 
Oh, Lucy was taking the pictures. Yep. Oh, yeah. In that one, you'll see the cell. Oh, yeah. She's Only half like, of her face is in there. <laughs> that's funny. Well, and two, I did go back and watch that video the other day and uh-huh. watch Landon kind of sectioning everybody <laughs> off to make sure they didn't touch it. He's got his little hands out there. Hey, stay back, stay back, yep. stay back. Nobody touch the dice or yep. else. Or else they'll make an excuse and say, interference, interference, interference call interference, yep. throw, throw the red flag. <laughs> so he did. If y'all go back yeah. and watch the video, Landon is kind of has both arms out like, oh, hold the line. Hold the line. Get back, get back. Hold get back. the line. And then they just go crazy. Man. Oh, yeah, we're good. Been 15 minutes. Whoops. Oh, yeah. It's all right. Hit it. Let's do some verse. This is our show. This is our show. That's right. You can take it and like it. Yeah, that's how it goes. <laughs> All right. Let me see here. My verse for the week and take y'all to the book of Proverbs, which is, I was thinking about it on the way over here. Proverbs is like the golden book. It's just full of the best stuff. And in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 10 says, a rebuke impresses who? A rebuke impresses the. See, it's hard to go first. Dang! Hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna, uh, <laughs> the discerning person. Sorry, y'all. A rebuke impresses. You can know it, but when that mic hits you in the face, it's like. Whoop. No, that one word slipped my mind. Plus, I'm still, right. I'm still thinking yeah. about washing my beard at this moment. But yeah. anyway. A rebuke impresses a discerning person more than a hundred lashes a fool. And I love that because, one, it seems like it's for two people. It's it's for two groups. The group number one is, you know, us to recognize, you know, in talking to people out there, it tells us how to deal with people, right? Mm -hmm. It's like if it's a, you know... A fool, and you rebuke a fool, it's going to do no good. But if it's a discerning person, they will be impressed by it. It will be good mm-hmm. for them. Good for them. I th- see, and, I, I kind of take it to say, what did it say, 100 lashes, 1,000 lashes? 100 lashes. Uh, like 100. 100 lashes is going to teach a fool less than one rebuke is going to teach a discerning person. I take a lot from this. You okay? Yeah, go ahead. I take a lot from it. So I, I've, I'm like, okay, one, it's for it's for us to know God's telling us, hey, recognize uh-huh. that rebuking a, a person who's not going to accept it, it's just they're not going to accept it. Uh-huh. But if it's a discerning person, that's great. They A good discerning person is going to be impressed, and they're going to take that rebuke and let it change their heart and, and consider it. But it's also for mm-hmm. us. The second group is ourselves. So for us, it's like, am I the type of person? We should ask ourselves, if I, am I the type of person who it, who who um, is impressed by being rebuked, like a good, re- righteous rebuke? So someone rebukes me mm-hmm. who is a Christian, and uh, I suppose a Christian or not, if it's a good rebuke, um, you can take it. But it tells you you're doing something wrong. Then am I the type of person that says, thank you for telling me that I, w- I didn't know that um, or I didn't recognize I was doing that mm-hmm. or I did recognize it and I needed to hear it from somebody else other than me and my brain. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, the Holy Spirit t- should be telling us also. Essentially, it's saying, it. do you, got, do you have a t- teachable spirit? Yes, no. I mean, that's basically what it's saying. Are you willing to hear that you could be off on something? It's tough, man. It yeah, is it's tough. tough. I don't know if that's a... I don't know if that's a a Western society kind of a thing. I mean, our culture, boy, you just don't see a lot of people that like to hear that they're wrong. Of course not. Man. You know, of course. That's you why it's that off base. But that's why we're the remnant. That's mm-hmm. why Christians are the remnant because. But I mean, Christians aren't always the best at it either. No, you know? but Christians are accountable to the word mm-hmm. or don't be one. That's it. Right, show me in the word where I'm wrong. But now, but now you have to unpack that and you have to ask, what does rebuke mean? Mm-hmm. You know, what exactly do we mean by rebuke? And does that mean anytime somebody tells us something's wrong, we got to just be like, cool. 
okay, let me change that. You know what I'm saying? For sure. There's a lot there. And that's for each person to look at themselves and their for own sure. heart and say. But I think you have to at least I, consider it. I think that's what consider. it comes down to. Boy, you, a, a wise person. What did it say? What was the word? Not a wise person, but a. Discerning person. A discerning See? person. So you have to. So so that makes sense. So, so you a have discerning. to be a discerning person. Mm-hmm. You have to be able to discern the wisdom that comes out of it. Impresses a discerning person. Yeah. But then I like it, too, because it says more than 100 lashes a full. Oh, yeah. And so I and thinking about this and meditating Me in my 20s. This, you know, the verses is talking about a full and a discerning person. Yeah. And I'm like, what do you have? You have on a scale, you've got a full, then you've got, you've got an ignorant person mm-hmm. who's different than a full, mm-hmm. right? But on the far bad side of the scale, you got a full. Then somewhere in the middle, you have the ignorant people. Mm -hmm. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you've got the discerning person. And I'm sure there's a hundred others we could throw in there, but that's that's our scale right now. And I'm like, I like this because I'm like, you know, for the ignorant person, they they just don't. Well, you see them. I mean, you see that person that it's. They don't I bet. Know. I bet almost everybody that's listening right now could hear that. Could hear that. that be thinking about a full, and, and they're gonna have somebody that pops in their mind. And we all know somebody <laughs> that just is there. Takes their head and ran. It's like they ram in the wall. Like, what are you doing? Doesn't that hurt? They don't stop. Like, what are you just doing? Walking right into the wall. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all you got to do is stop. Stop walking into the wall. And they have people that tell them, and they have all this stuff, and they're, ah, no, nah, no, nah, let me go ahead. And it's, I'm, I've only hit it 99 times. I need to get that That's a full. And yeah. they're going to get less out of that, and they're also going to hurt a whole lot more than a hundred. Than lashes. the discerning person. Yeah. They could get 100 lashes and still get nothing from it. Mm-hmm. But a discerning person will hear it one time and go, mm-hmm. thank you for that. Yeah. I I do need that. Yeah. Because our Christian walk should, hey, humility's in there. we got to be humble mm-hmm. enough to be able to accept if we're wrong and consider that we could be wrong. I loved it when the time in my life came that I realized I could be wrong. I, I stop, I'm going to stop arguing so hard and say I could be wrong. Yeah. Even, even if I don't think I'm wrong. But just have, if you can approach it just from more of the discussion rather than the... Yeah. The need to be right and and to get your way and yeah, it's bad to to gain um, gratification out of oh yeah look at me I was right or Dude, no matter what I'm not gonna buckle I mean that's just I always love it because I love it because the person who will not if it's a Christian if I'm talking to a Christian who will not acknowledge and accept that or even hear a rebuke. It, I'm like, so you're perfect. I thought only one person was perfect. It is a person who will just not even hear that they could be wrong, who's a Christian, is suggesting they're perfect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, how can you logically and of reasonable mind think you're perfect, mm-hmm. like that you couldn't possibly be wrong? Yes, you could. Yeah. Even if you're 100% sure you're right. You could be wrong. Yeah. So I love it. I'm, I'm like, it's it's good to enjoy the fact I don't have to be perfect. I'm not, hey, and I'm not. Hey, just be. good luck. Good luck growing. I mean, good luck. It's growing. just really good. You're, you're not. In gonna fact, grow. it's just yeah. not going to happen. It's not going to happen. That's you're going to stay put right where you are. You're going to actually die. I mean, you're you're. I love that the law of grow or die that Jimmy Evans did a long time mm-hmm. ago. But I mean, it's true. Yeah. You're either moving forward. Or you're moving backwards. There's no staying put in the same place in your spiritual life and in wisdom and knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good stuff. All right. You got your time? You happy? You feel good about it? I feel good. All right. (laughs) Okay. So mine comes from James chapter 1, verse 12. And I I literally just did the, I kept on grabbing different books. Let's see if I can find something in there. Let's see if I, yeah, it sticks out. Oh, yeah. And uh, But it says, blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. It gives you shivers. Yeah. To receive the, I mean, you receive just, the crown of life. I envision a guy, a dude standing there under trial. You know, blessed is the man who remains steadfast. So I was thinking about that, Gabe. Paul. And it says remains 
mm-hmm. steadfast, not who becomes steadfast mm-hmm. under trial, who remains steadfast. So here's the deal. To remain steadfast under trial, you got to already be there by the time the trial gets there. What's that mean? Preparation, commitment, prayer, devotion, study, commitment to your relationship with God mm-hmm. to the point that you are solid, unwavering, gentle, walking in the fruits of the Spirit before the trial hits. Yes. Man, you can't you can't patch the boat when the storm gets there. You know, it's yeah, too right. It's too late. It's too late. Yeah. You better you better have all that shored up. What's done is done. You know, yeah. well, man, I'm heading out to sea. I got this cargo I got to deliver. There's a massive hole in the hole, but it's just above the 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 water sea, line. the water line. Yeah, you know, I should be okay. I mean, I got all the ones underneath the water line patched, so we're we're treading water. And the weather forecast is good. Yeah, yeah, it'll be all right. <laughs> Shouldn't be a storm. We should be good to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you get out there and you're, you're trying to patch a hole. Well, that's not the way it works. You have to be steadfast, not perfect, but you have to be steadfast before the trial comes. Then when the trial comes, you'll be able to remain steadfast. Mm-hmm. And then it says, for when he has stood the test. I mean, it's a test. I mean, we are tested. Yeah, the test. We are tested. I mean, you look at people like Job. I'm like, man, don't think it can't happen to you. Job? Yeah. yeah. Job's don't, a tough one. Don't think. Yeah, but it ended really bad. And that's why I'm just going to go in worst case scenario. You look at Daniel God. in the lion's den. You look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were already they, prepared for years before. They did, they died King David having to go fight Goliath. I mean, you, you talk about some trials coming. But look, man, when King David, now he had trials that he failed, and he had some that he won. So he, he's that's why he's one of the... Greatest characters in the Bible and and such an encouragement. You know, he certainly failed the Bathsheba trial. Um, You know what? I was just thinking about you don't have a lot of I'm trying to think of any stories in the Bible where you have somebody who um, just got salvation. And then there were great stories that followed in that moment. Like all these stories, these guys had already been walking with God for Mm -hmm. some time Mm -hmm. or all their lives. And I'm like, yeah, they are. They were kind of Paul, kind of, kind of, but not because he he loved. He was God. serving he, Yahweh, he was, right? Yeah, he was, and he thought he was serving him properly, mm-hmm. but but he was interesting he point. He Paul would be Christ, kind, kind, kind of. of he, he, he was devoted. He was devoted to was, Yahweh. To Yahweh, <laughs> yeah. And then just didn't understand that Christ was the Messiah. Yeah, yeah. So even he though, even though kind of, he, he, he was. Newly reborn, mm-hmm. but he had been a Jew, who, so he, so he had a foundation in God and knew of the Messiah. Just didn't realize the Messiah had come and gone by the time he. And got you look at all the disciples; they were like Paul. They'd been they'd believed in God and served in God for years, but then Jesus comes along for and it. They walk with him for three years, mm-hmm. two three years, mm-hmm. and before they can get it's. It, you know, you have to walk with God on a regular every day. Oh, yeah. And then one day you look back and it's been 20, mm-hmm. 30, 40, 50 years. And then you can be stead. Mm-hmm. You, it's easier to be yeah. steadfast. Yes. Because you you know. But God you've walked through God. it. You've trained in it. You've prepared in it. But you can also go that same amount of years and, and not and still be no farther along, you know. If you're not. Pursuing him. If you're not pursuing him. Sad. Yep. Sad. sad. But then but then uh but then the final part um yes. for then that they you will receive the crown of life which God has promised to those who love him. So it almost it, it really is saying if you love him, this is what you're doing. You are steadfast. You are able to stand the trials because it says, if you do these things, then you will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Those yeah. who love him. It kind of is this circle. Do remain steadfast in time of trials and do withstand the, stand the test. Mm-hmm. These are the, these are signs of where you're at in your walk with God. Do you say you love him? Jesus said, if you say you love me, but do not do my commandments. Mm-hmm. 
you're a liar and the truth is not in you. <laughs> you know? I mean, straight I ain't up, a judge, straight but up. God is. Yeah. He's the one that says it. So... I love it because it also p- puts us in our place. Yes. Because. Which is we need. Well, I'm like, the Bible says, you know, God's not tested. Don't tempt God. You know, don't run around testing him. And if you're God, this will happen. If you're God, that'll happen. But we are surely tested. Regularly tested. And I love that because we need it. He doesn't, mm-hmm. he doesn't need it. Mm-hmm. That's right. I like that. Amen. All right, Gabe. Well, we are continuing on with our Fruit of the Spirit series. Love it. Coming to us out of Galatians chapter 5. And we are on fruit number 5. Fruit 5. The kindness fruit. Be kind. Rewind. We were trying to think of a title for it, and that's what I came up with. I doubt (laughs) that's going to stick. Because it was those old... You know, on the video cassettes back in the Hastings and Blockbuster days, and and uh, get old. You know, they put on the video, the VHS. Man, the young people that are listening to this show are probably like, "What the heck are you talking about? It's a VHS." And what's a please be kind and be kind yeah. and rewind? So you can't. You had to rewind it, guys. I mean, DVDs came already rewind. I wonder they don't really have to rewind anything, uh, nope. so they don't even might not even know lasers. what rewind is. But laser brains, yeah. So be good, but it said be kind, rewind anyway. So that's probably not going to stick, but we'll find out what it is whenever it comes out. What does Father Miles have to say? So kindness, of course, I leak. I looked up the the Greek because I was reading it in the New Testament. Looked up the Greek word for it and definition. So kindness. I'm going to see if I can say this right. Christatis. Ooh, that's a cool. Christatis. Yes. Which is, which is a pretty cool word. This is what it means. Well, let me ask you. What do you think it means? What do you think kindness means? Uh, like I know it's, it's funny because my spirit kind of knows of what right, it is. Right, 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 right. It's but like one of those things that kind of. Kindness. I would say a kindness. I would say probably a thoughtful generosity. <laughs> not bad. Man, that's not bad. So the 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 uh, Christotes uh, defines it as this uh, in the Greek: okay. tolerance toward others, tender concern, uprightness. Yeah, it is kindness of heart and act. Yes, it's a it's essentially a state of approach towards people. Yeah. This is one of my favorites of all, though. Yeah. Kindness. I mean, it really is. And that is something, I, I know we've talked about it before, but I mean, your 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 witch friend, when we, when I was 25, you were about 20. Yeah. And uh, that I just pretty much ripped a new one. For being a witch and a Satanist. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. And I was standing up for God. And she was saying some rough stuff, but I mean, it, it, uh, so what? Yeah. You know? Yeah. God doesn't need me to defend him. It's funny because she's still a creation of God. Yeah, that's right. A lost yeah, he made her. Yeah. A lost he, he calls on me to speak truth to her in kindness. Yeah. To be, man, it's such a, man, it's such a, there are times that kindness is easy. Yeah. You know, I, I love my mom and she needs help. Yeah. You know, go, you know, you're being kind, you're doing this and that. But, but, but being kind to people that hate you, which is what we're called to do. Uh, again, it doesn't mean not speaking truth, but it means acting a certain kind of way, being more focused on the mission, the great commission, right? The gospel and, and the importance of them to have it and the, and the understanding that that's God's creation in front of me. That's, yeah, that's it. Right there. I think that's well, the key. What can I do? Recognizing who, to who, love you're, it. It who you're talking to. Yeah. Like, do you recognize who you're talking to? When you're talking to any human being. Any. That Bigger human Antifa. is a creation of God. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Of yeah. God Almighty. The, what's that? On The Godfather. The movie The Godfather. He's like, 
oh, I didn't know who I was talking to or who I was sitting with or whatever. You didn't realize you're yeah. talking to the boss yeah. of of a powerful person on that movie anyway. But in in our lives, when we're talking to somebody who is saying spewing sick, stupid things, yeah. evil things, demonic things, that person is under Satan's role. Yeah. But it that person yeah, yeah. is the creation of Yahweh. God, let me ask you this, Yahweh. And you might you might say something different, but I'll be real about my my thoughts and response on this. But let's say a you know homeless person, right? Uh, yeah. no, man, I, I ain't gonna lie, man. That crap annoys me. Homeless oh, people. Oh, okay. But let me let me go into depth a little bit. Okay. Not fully, not wholly, and I, I wasn't supposed to say the c the word. The c word. You did it. So yeah, yep. Miles, feel free to bleep that out. <laughs> Miles says we're, we need to be above that. And I'm what stuff to. annoys you? Okay, well, it, anno- it annoys me. So it's become this this. Uh, not every person, you know, back in the day, it used to seem kind of, and maybe this is just the way it seemed, but it seemed to me like. Man, it's people down on their luck. They lose their job, this and that, have a hard time. But now, you know, now there's so many darn, darn jobs out there that that uh, I'm like, man, go get a job. Yeah, you know, go work hard. And this is America, and there's all kinds of opportunities in India, Ethiopia, all these places that you have horrible economies and yeah. you know all this kind of stuff, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, it's land opportunity for all its faults and problems, man. You can still go out there and put a roof over your head, do all this stuff. Um, so it's easy to become cynical, and uh, and you know there are times that I'm just, I oh, man, I see them on the street, I'm just like, good job. And there are times, <laughs> uh, there are times, man. I'm just being hard. real about it's it. You know, that's the that's the flesh. I'm not saying I'm I've heard right. That I'm from not saying people. Right. Uh, but um, I've I've uh, seen people. Yell at him! Hey, get a job now. If it's some old or you know, wheelchair written, I, I ain't talking about them. But I, but so many young people that are just out there, you know, the twenty five to forty yeah, year old, right? Just the, we look perfectly able bodied and I'm yeah. like, oh, you know, drugs. I guess are more important than and again, it's just very judgmental. So many it's, it's so it is, judge, uh, it is. But all, I mean, but uh, but but we're here to be real about it and talk about it and. And uh, man, I'm perfectly imperfect. You know, trying yeah. to trying to get there, and yeah. it's embarrassing to say, but Ugh. but it but it's a truth. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that has those kind of thoughts. You know, no, you're not. I mean, obviously, uh, but I mean, I'm like, I'm my thought is get a job. That's fine. But am I? Let me tell you, the where, like, where's my kindness? Uh-huh. Where's my Where's my kindness? Is it even my place to say something like that? I rolled up on a homeless guy one time and I wanted to, I pulled off the highway. I pulled off the intersection and everything, got out of my truck and was walking up to him. And as I was walking up to him, something of his fell over and this big old bottle of booze went rolling out and I paused. I was like, do I think I should give him the money? I wanted to give him like five bucks, but that booze rolled out and I judged immediately. Yeah. Uh, I, Which that's I, fine. That's, you know, I would I say that's not even like, it's not like you, it, you're sure, no. wrong for saying, no, sorry, I'm not giving you money to go get drugs, go get this and that. I'm going to go ahead and bring some food on. But but what's the state of your heart? You know what I'm saying? I, like, where's yeah. the state of your heart in regards to, in regard to God's creation that's yeah. in front of you? Again, we're talking this through in the moment, so it's not like this is something we've kind of sat and talked about before this. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not saying you are wrong for thinking, yo, what are you doing here? You know, you, you could be doing better than this. But are you like, you know, is, is it more, you annoy me. I'm sick of this junk, man. I want my street curves. I want my city curves to look nice. Oh, yeah. And you're dirty enough to see. I yeah. mean, is that the nature? Because look, again, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, and I've had I've had that feeling. Yeah, you know, nah, I'm not gonna say I sat there and was all fired up that I had that feeling. Uh, yeah, oh, you course. know, why are you not exactly? Why are, why are you here? proud yeah. of it? But just the way you felt. Yeah, and and I I still think you know there's there's but that's a whole other debate and how to handle homelessness. And all. That's not what I'm trying to go down. But I'm just saying, what is your state of mind towards the person, the creation of God's? Yeah. When you see them, uh-huh. you know, 
I've also had time just to kind of soften this blow a little bit because I'm sure people are like, yeah, filthy. You don't need to be on that show anymore. <laughs> oh, no, I love but, it because I, I'm, I am. I'm appalled by what you're saying. And, and that's good. And I mean, I, that is good. But I also, I'm like, this is about truth. I guarantee we yeah. get on a subject that I'm that I'm not so so good in or, or have right. a different. And people, you know what? I think I'll yours was like the last me. couple of weeks you were using some bad example you, a couple of times. So it's my turn. That's fine. It's my turn. Um, it's embarrassing. If I'm my, we're I can, human. And I can we, feel my body temperature is hot right now. I mean, it, it is embarrassing. But I've uh, also had times where I see a, a homeless person sitting on the side and my heart sinks to my gut. Yeah. And there's something about them yeah. that I can't get off it's my mind being, and I have to get out. I tell people all the time, Henry, and I say it to myself a lot. I It is so hard being a human. I hate it. Being a human is there's yeah. so much that I'm like, God, why did you create us? What a mess we are. And, and what a mess I am. Uh, why would you leave me? Well, the scripture, who it's, am I that God is mindful of me? Golly, yeah. yeah. Why do you even give a hoot? Yeah. And because it's not, we're not, there's nothing we can do to deserve it. We're not deserving. Uh, we, we are filthy, 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 filthy creatures. Yeah. Yeah. Completely. Washed clean by the blood of the lamb. And yeah. that's the part that, and that's, of course, where this all comes back to is because of what God, what Jesus came down and did and what God set this all to be, Satan just ruined it. Like what a moron, but he just ruined it. But then, then comes the gratitude of the of the sacrifice on the cross, and then out of that should come the ultimate endless uh, uh, jar of kindness mm-hmm. pouring out of us. You should be able to be kind because mm-hmm. he had to sacrifice his life to wash your sins clean. Like that's what it took. Yeah. I mean, what a gift it took to get it, get us to a place where we could be clean and pure again. How, my, my, a little gratitude makes a kindness go a long way. The first scripture I have on here goes exactly with that. Let me read it real quick. Titus 3, 4, and 4 through 7. But when, when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, But according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Yeah. That's Titus 3, 4 through 7. Uh, I mean... Go, Titus. I mean, that's exactly what is what we're talking about right here. I mean, to, to, to not have kindness towards a person. And you tell me if you agree Mm -hmm. is to essentially say, I'm more important than you in this moment. Yeah. Yep. Maybe not as an overall, maybe you're not an overall arrogant person. Um, I don't think I'm an overall arrogant person, so but, but I can is, absolutely say that I have had moments, embarrassing moments, where I, I've thought I've placed myself over a homeless person in my mind. You know, I can say that I've had embarrassing moments where I've pa- placed myself over people that I've worked with in my mind. Well, I don't like the way you... I don't like the way you handle that. I handle different mm-hmm. this and that. And I don't like you. I don't you like the way you treated me. Or, you yeah. know, so I'm not going to make sure you feel my pressure, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> you know. I'm going to lean on you. Yeah, but, but you know, I mean, kindness is one of the fruits of the Spirit. And it's to- I do like tolerance that. toward others, tender concern, and uprightness. So selfish would be the antithes- antithesis uh, or or whatever of yeah. kindness. Yeah, that would be a good a good stopper. Intentional or unintentional? I mean, I, I think for Christians, which are mostly what's listening to this show, right? <laughs> Sorry, I've heard it said both ways. <laughs> um, ta- but tolerant, you know, you can you you may not be an overall selfish person, 
But you can certainly have selfish moments that can be damaging and devastating to people. Mm-hmm. And especially if, especially if you're a Christian and they're not. Especially then. I mean, yeah. the most, the very, the, the very, very most important thing that we do in our lives is share the gospel. And part of, not all of, there's this whole thing of, well, just leave your life as an example and people will want what you have. And that's not untrue, but that's not the whole truth either. We should be speaking and preaching and and being willing to, to verbalize the gospel to those around us. Um, but part of that message is, is how we live our lives, is how we treat other people, especially our enemies. Yeah. So I struggled, man, my flesh, wretched man that I am, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, there are times that I I treat somebody some way and I feel justified in doing so because by the, by the laws of man, which we, we read about at the beginning of this yeah. series, I am justified. You are justified. I do. Um, in my divorce, I did. I remember thinking... How how should I handle this divorce? I, should I you know should I be nice? Mm-hmm. Should I, I didn't want you to do that. Should I be mean? Yep. Should I be ruthless? Yep. And uh, I did. Yep. You know it. Uh, you know it crossed my mind all these things. Yep. And um, but, but that's th- good. You were thinking through the battle, kind of like you were talking about with the Magomedov. Yeah. You yeah. Know, I th- thinking through, through it, praying through, through it. it. That's wisdom. Yep. And I couldn't, man, I was going, huh, what do I do? Mm-hmm. And um, ultimately, the the kindness approach still won out. First of all, God, yeah. told, God yeah. told me, yeah. straight up told me, I want you to do this in love. And I found so much joy in the idea that I do not have to be ruthless and hateful and vindictive, I get to still be kind. Mm-hmm. What'd you I've, do? I've, you, were, you remained steadfast in the time of trial. It was something great yeah. because I didn't, I was like, it's still wrong. I, and people, uh, that's where I was going with this was, um, you were saying in the eyes of the world, you're justified mm-hmm. and people, and I was thinking, man, for, for what I've been through, I feel justified um, but I was like, I do, I do not answer. I got, like, I don't live by the rules of the world, mm-hmm. but I'm not justified. Jesus died on the cross for me. Mm-hmm. What justification do I even have? Even, even though I felt like I went through some stuff, uh, there was still no mm-hmm. justification. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are like, well, this and that happened and this and that happened. It's, it's within your mm-hmm. right, this and that. And I, and people even advise me some bad stuff, which I won't say on here because for sure, because again, people are people. I, people are people. That's why you people. can't hold yourself. And by they the said standards of men. you can do yeah. that, Gabe. And I was like, gosh, that don't line up with the Bible. And it is it is a hard thing. But looking back, Henry, I'm sure I said I am so glad. That, yeah, that God did step in and mm-hmm. tell one. He told me what he wanted me to do, but two. I still couldn't, I did enjoy the fact that I didn't like the idea of being a hater or a hateful man. I did not want to be a hateful man in that. Yeah. And to this day, what God told me to do is what I do. It And it it always works out well because I, uh, when you're not hateful yep. and you're kind to somebody, it it just grows. It just. It, I don't know. It just brings a certain way about it. It's like well, look, look. What's gonna hard. What's gonna speak to people more? Selfishness or kindness? I mean, kindness. Always I mean, it, it just that's that. Those are your choices. Kindness. Kindness is yeah. an act towards others. Selfishness is an act towards yourself. Yeah. Which one? Which one do you want? What's going to speak more? What's going to spread the gospel more? Which, which is. The hope of salvation through Christ, through the blood of Christ Jesus, that could not be earned by anything we did because our righteousness is as filthy rags in the nostrils of yeah. God, right? Our righteousness, our very best, stinks. Yeah. It is by grace we are saved, Yeah, not of works. We can't boast. 
I love it. So we can't boast. So we can't boast. It's like this is from God, not from you. You're not. You're not that big. Yeah, I mean that's again going back to the gospel. What what speaks more? I mean the kindness because you're showing kindness there, and and so we've got an example of kindness. We've got an example of unkindness. To be clear, I mean I'm, I don't run around being unkind. I think oh, I'm pretty kind to most people because I really am. It's really it's really stinks, you know that that. But what's more important? Um, you know, where am I at? What, what am I putting off this person? Do I, do I, you know, smile at them? Look, yeah, fine. If you don't feel led to give them money. And this is just one example, but we, we can think of all, you know, rude customer service, rude server, you know, mm-hmm. server just doesn't care. I, well, I deserve this. I deserve this. I deserve that. Blah, blah, blah. You know, we're, we, we feel like we deserve all these great things, but I've heard a pastor preach it and, and he was going through the, I deserve this, I deserve that. You deserve death. Death. Everything else is a gift. Well, you yes. Know? Ooh, isn't that good? You deserve death. Everything yeah. else is a gift. Yeah, that's so good. And, and it is a gift. Our salvation is everything else. Yeah. And, and we have the opportunity to show kindness. If it's a smile. You know. If it's a, you know, to, to, it can be a witness in and of itself. I tell my, I, the, I'll never forget after God had told me to be, uh, to do this in love, I did pretty good, but I didn't do it perfectly. I did, um, at one point get into an argument with my ex during the divorce. And I said, Mm -hmm. how can you be so effing stupid? And she just stared at me and she just said that was hateful. And I was like, I kind of hate you. You know, I was so mm-hmm. mad. And I had to circle back around, give her a call later on, say, I'm sorry that I said that. You know, mm-hmm. it, it is these moments. That's where they get us. And we don't yeah, forget for sure. or we don't remember. That's God's creation. And you slip and Satan snuck up on you in that moment and got you. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, man. Or your man. own flesh. Your own straight up selfish desires because our flesh yep. is broke. Yep. The law of man, which is what our flesh resides under. You know, we are set free by the blood of the lamb. But that's why the the spirit wages worth the flesh and the flesh wages worth the spirit. The spirit wants this and the, the things of God and the flesh wants the, the things of man. And it still craves after those things. It still craves after yeah. self glorification and self gratification. So and what would you say? What would you say is a is a good method to exercise your ability to be kind? What if you were like to put in yeah. a routine in your life? Like thought, for you thought, thought out process. I mean, you you have to like say you set a goal to be to be far kinder in the next three months than you are today and you had to put a plan into place what would you do in your life walk upright which is part of the definition of kindness and that's what i was going to say you're you're in that situation uh was that was a standard of walking upright okay straight up and down upright without blemish right right so you, but you, but you had to take time to think that out, to pray that out. You had to strategize. It's kind of Are you of talking about me or people? In that moment. Oh. Um, you had to strategize, uh-huh. right, how you were going to do it. It's going back to Khabib Namagomedov mm-hmm. talking about when Thank he's you. fighting. It is interesting the way this all seems to come together, but... Before he goes into to it and during it, he's done all this preparation before the fight. The fight is coming. The trial is coming. Mm-hmm. He's done all this preparation before, and he's able to think out each move, each thought, each counter yep. throughout the process and be prepared. He's already prepared himself for it. And I can say, Gabe, like, I mean, the, the – man, I <laughs> – Thankfully, more so over the last year than ever in my life, but I'm constantly in each moment thinking, 
are you right or are you wrong? Mm-hmm. Are you glorifying God? Not not am I right on my, whatever my argument or thought is, but am I am I presenting this from a selfish perspective right. or from a God a godly kingdom of God perspective? A way in a way that will glorify God. Even if I'm standing my ground, yes, standing your ground. We're not supposed to be weak, you know. We're we're, we're thinking, supposed to stand up for righteousness, but and I love that. Uh, so it is the steadfast. Your verse being steadfast, mm-hmm. but I I'm like a, I, I'm I'm wondering about something tangible, like practice in being kind. Like today, I'm gonna, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Today, you know. But uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, inti- like, I'm gonna hold a tally sheet. I'm gonna take a little clipboard with me, and I'm mm-hmm. gonna make it that today I'm gonna do ten acts of kindness. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Can you imagine that? It'd be cool. You know? I, I don't know. That's what I'm we, saying. We like, got enough homework, so don't be trying to put a to homework pr- assignment to practice. <laughs> don't be scared. Don't be scared. We can do this. <laughs> a little tally sheet that says. Um, um, check mark one. I I offered to get someone coffee, to bring them coffee because every day at work somebody comes. At fifty people come into the office mm-hmm. in the kitchen to get coffee. Today I'm gonna offer to go mm-hmm. get someone lunch for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know I don't know. This is some kind of way to practice being kind. If for someone who's like really struggles with kindness, you know, could they come up with a yeah. Could there be, you know, anyway, the, the suggestion is there for sure. Practice it. I think, uh, I have, you know, I have one more scripture I want to read real quick. Um, very short. And then I kind of have a, a cheesy example of kindness in my mind from a, from a cheesy mm-hmm. movie. Let's go. Uh, so Proverbs cheese. 20, 21, or sorry, Proverbs 21, 21, whoever pursues righteousness and kindness will find life, righteousness and honor. Okay, say it again. Whoever pursues righteousness and kindness will find life, righteousness, and honor. That's what I want to be walking in. A, an, a, a fulfilled life, righteousness, and honor. I mean, that is the kind of person I want to be seen as. But to get there, you what have verse to is that? pursue Proverbs twenty one twenty one. That was my verse last week. <laughs> oh, that is crazy! I thought I recognized it. Whenever <laughs> I'm that, like, wait, I know. Oh, that, that is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it when that stuff happens. Good old proverb. I'm like, I know this coming one. Through, I know this through. one, y'all, because I memorized. That. Yeah, <laughs> this is why we memorize verse. Let it become a part of you. That's right. That's yeah, so cool. I can feel it in my bones. That is that is a good one. I love that one. But it is good, and and it goes right with this. So you are laying the foundation. If I really had it memorized, I would have said, "Is that Proverbs twenty one twenty one?" Oh, that would have been uh, slick. That would have been slick. But, but it's twenty one twenty one. I think like, how do you? I don't know. But you don't want to. You don't, you don't want to be like, like I'm pretty sure. I know. I know. It, it is fun memorizing scripture. It is fun. Uh, okay, so cheesy example. Um, then Come on. you were going to read a story, so I'll yes. pass that over to you. Um, but cheesy example. So I'm look of kindness. uh, Yes. Okay. I'm a Fast and Furious fan. Oh gosh, it kills me. (laughs) And so on the fifth episode, uh, Dwayne Johnson comes into play, and he's this bounty hunting. You know, he works for the government. There you go. Awesome. He's the right hand of God, and he's gonna come for you and all this. So he's coming for Dominic Toretto and. And uh, which is played by Vin Diesel, and he ends up capturing the whole gang, right? And they're all in the back of this armored vehicle, and they're they're done for. It's over for him. Mm-hmm. And all of them are captured, so they're they're going. Well, then this drug lord dude attacks them because he's got this vendetta against them. So he attacks them, and attacks his whole crew, and and they're all locked up in the back, so they can't get out and help. But his whole crew, old old. Uh, uh, Dwayne Johnson's crew, they get out and they're shooting with, shooting it out with these drug dudes and they all get killed at front, except for The Rock, but he's about to get killed. Like He's laying on the ground. He's looking around. He can see all his dead people all over the place. It's over. You it's, yeah, it's over. And uh, Toretto's crew managed to get out. Who had been hunted down by him and was being brought in by him yeah. 
And so you, but you don't see them get out or anything. And so he's just kind of sitting there on the ground, getting ready to just get smoked. And all of a sudden, boo boo, you just see the, you know, all the bad guys starting to get smoked, right? They're yeah. Getting taken out. Yeah. All over the place. He's like, what's happening? And Toretto walks up to him and they had had this huge fight. They hated each other. Uh huh. They had had this massive fight right before he got, ca- they all got captured. And uh, Toretto's got a gun in his hand and all this stuff and is walking up and he just thinks, yeah, he's going to kill me. And then all of a sudden, so you see, Toretto's big arm reach out to help him get up, get up, and he he's shot, so he has to put his arm around him. And Toretto basically kind of carries him back to the vehicle, and you know, with his arm around, he's still uh-huh. walking, limping, limping there. But I mean, it is a cool. You just think of that arm yeah. reaching down, yeah. Instead, your of- arm with the opportunity to reach down to your enemy, yeah, uh, to yeah. someone I mean, you disagree with, or whatever the case the may really be. Well. And say, here, I got you. I got you, man. You yeah. Know, I got you. I, I disagree with you. You've done horrible things to me. Yeah. Um, but I got you. I'm still going to show the love of Jesus, the yeah. kindness. I'm still going to show tolerance towards you. Yeah. I'm still going to show tender concern, and I'm going to stand upright. I think that does make me think of the the videos I've seen, and I don't know that I can agree with these. But, you know, some it's always these scenes in court where there's some murderer that murdered somebody's child or somebody's Mm -hmm. brother or something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, and then they the family member of of the deceased and the murdered gets up there and says, you know, I don't hate you. That's crazy because I love God. I love you. Yeah. And I will pray for you. Uh, yeah. And I forgive you. Yeah, it's crazy. And what what bigger witness is there? I mean, what? I don't know. What bigger witness is there? I don't know. I don't I mean, see man, how there could be a bigger. I hear of people that do that, and I'm like, oh, man. I have I have a ways to go. That makes me think the same thing. I have a ways to go. I don't know go. if I could say yeah. that if you took one of my babies uh, or or one of my loved ones. I, right. I'm like, man, it is. It is. It will stretch you. I, I got to think it's the strength of God. I mean, it's definitely the strength of God in them. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that causes them to be able to walk through that fire. And well, they got to be recognizing, yeah, that kindness that mm-hmm. they got to be recognizing that is still a creation of God. Mm-hmm. They're yeah. doing it. Yeah, that is walking the talk. Yeah, uh, that's that's it. Walking the walk or walking the talk. Yeah. Pretty sure I got it right. Anyway, let's don't get into that debate. Go ahead. It's, it's you know. All right, then. <laughs> I'm going to read this little story. And uh, it's called A Simple Gesture by Wayne Schlatter. Mark. John, John Wayne. John Wayne Schlatter. Schlatter. Yeah. Um, Mark was walking home from school one day when he noticed the boy ahead of him had tripped and dropped all the books he was carrying along the way, uh, along with two sweaters, a baseball bat, a glove, and a small tape recorder. Mark knelt down and helped the boy pick up the scattered articles. Since they were going the same way, he helped to carry the burden. As they walked, Mark discovered the boy's name was Bill, that he loved... Um, that he loved video games, baseball, and history, that he was having a lot of trouble with his other subjects and that he had just broken up with his girlfriend. They arrived at Bill's home first, and Mark was invited in for a Coke and to watch some TV. The the afternoon passed pleasantly with a few laughs and some shared small talk. Then Mark went home. They continued to see each other around school, had lunch together once or twice. Um, they ended up at the same high school where they had brief contact uh, contacts over the years. Finally, the long-awaited senior year came. And three weeks before graduation, Bill asked Mark if they could talk. Bill reminded him of the day years ago when they had first met. Do you ever wonder why I was carrying so many things from school that day, asked Bill. You see, I cleaned out my locker because I didn't want to leave a mess for anyone else. I had stored away some of my mother's pills 
and I was going home to commit suicide. But after we spent some time together, I realized that if I had, I would have missed that time and so many others that might follow. So you see, Mark, when you picked up my books for me that day, you did a lot more. You saved my life. Goodness. Yeah. That's a... Uh, it, well, you you can't get more kind. You can't get more from this whole podcast and the whole subject of kindness no. than what is it? Why are what are we doing? Why are we Christians? Why do we love God so much? He He saves lives. God saves lives, and it and one of the things, one of the fruits of the Spirit is kindness. Mm-hmm. I love that story. And it took everything in me not mm-hmm. to just no, fall. Right down, yeah. I can't stand it. I can't take it because it's just a simple way of living yep. that saves lives. It saves lives. It's kindness. And, I, and I'll always say, yeah. I'll always say that people who are not Christian but still follow, because God, when he created the world and everything mm-hmm. in existence, I know that there were universal rules that went into play, and even evil people, if they use those, though, if they follow those rules, can still be blessed in different ways. I believe that because if you acting under the natural law of God, right? under the natural law of God, <clears throat> yeah. Now they didn't; they can't go to heaven without Absolutely asking Jesus not. into their yeah. their life and all that. But, um, but it's the simple yeah. rules and universal rules of God that if. Um, we learn them as Christians mm-hmm. can save and, and someone's we, life. Yeah. And we as Christians should be doing it even more so because, Absolutely. We, because we do Way understand so. how much we've been forgiven. We do understand the truth of it all. Um, and then cool, cool kind of <coughs> side part of that story is that uh, the writer of it actually uh, did become friends with them. And um, and and they were both in each other's weddings later on. One be, went on to become a minister. One went on to become a businessman, and and did very well. I mean, it just yeah. but all but have but from helped each other throughout trials and tribulations throughout their lives. All from one kind of act. I mean, we just we just don't know. I mean, we're I know we've gone a little bit over, but man, we just don't. We just it's just the opportunities there every every day, every day. We either choose it or we don't. And it's I've a had, disciplined act. All of the fruits of the spirit, man. We you have to do discipline yourself in. I've had so many times in my life that somebody yeah. did something kind to me, at, at moments that I knew I didn't deserve it. And it just melts you. It, it does just melt you. you. Yeah, it melts you in the moment. Well, um, if you guys will do us a favor and and uh, go like our Facebook page if you haven't already, comment on some posts, share the. Share this, this podcast with somebody that you think needs it, that it'll bless. Um, rate us, comment, do all those different things. Man, share it with your friends, if you will. Uh, we're, we're trying to get better at marketing it and sharing it and doing all that, but we need your help, and we sure would appreciate it. So, Gabe, enjoyed doing the show. Uh, boy, let's take the opportunity to be kind to those around us and, and show the glory of God. Let them see. Get your tally sheet out. Yep. Do it now. (laughs) Let's pray. (laughs) Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and your grace and certainly your kindness towards us that we do not deserve. We love you. We worship you. And we ask that you help us to show it to those around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Go ye into all the world. And preach the gospel. Amen. My part was so easy. It is easy. It is not. You totally fumbled it, and I nailed yours. I didn't even bother to try to think about it. Uh, Yeah, that was your problem. (laughs) 